Today I want to talk about five things you must know before you sign up with uh, with Rain. <laughs> Maybe we'll do Afrios after, but with Rain. Rain is the leading 5G technology, bro. Why not? Like if you're in Joburg, why not? You better do it right now. Okay, if you have a thousand rand to spend on data, you know? But you better do it, you know? Right now, a lot of people are enjoying pretty much American internet in South Africa uh, or, or, or Chinese internet in South Africa. And this is a fantastic news because for a while, like, South Africa has always been catching up to all of these worlds, you know? And, and, and I hate that. I really do. I really hate it when South Africa is the one catching up with everybody else, you know? Like, it doesn't make sense, you know? So, yeah. Rain has provided a technology that we can use um, to basically compete, and that's why that's the way I see it. That's number one. Um, but also, if you think about 5G, uh, you then have to also think about 4G. And if you think about 4G, you have to think about who first launched it. And if you think about who first launched that, you have to think about Vodacom, MTN, Talcom, Celsi, and you're like, wait. They have been big players and they haven't been able to do it. I mean, how come? Why? I mean, surely it's that easy, huh? You just de deploy a site and let people connect, isn't it? In theory, yeah. In theory, yeah. But practically, no. Not like that. Not like that at all. Um, there's something called the spectrum that a customers give out, which they have now, uh, but apparently it's a very, very long process and all the network providers are hating it. But you must have a specific spectrum um, given unto you or licensed to you. In other words, you pay for it because government has to make money. Uh, but in the same breath, uh, our government could have done this 2003 or earlier. Why 2003? Well, in 2003, there was a signed uh, um, policy with Liquid Telecom, which is one of the players in the South African market, but they just probably small for, for you to know. But Liquid Telecom had the spectrum, and for the longest of time, they never used it. So now Vodacom is actually going to backpack on them, and then they're going to use it, uh, and that's just going to create something that um, it's going to create a little bit of a competition for, for rain. But it doesn't take away the fact that Rain was the first one to do it and they did it right. Number two is that they actually, <laughs> they do not have a walk-in center. You you can't interface with Rain. Um, I don't know how much that's going to affect you or most of you, but the only way you can get a hold of Rain is through a call. Um, well, if you've watched this channel for too long, you'll know that I actually went to the to, 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 to the headquarters and actually got the router directly. Like I actually did the walking that I'm talking about. Um, but that is to say that they do welcome to a certain extent that that uh, human interaction. In fact, they do want to get there, but at the moment they just can't afford it. Um, I know this very well because I worked for Afrios at some point and they also couldn't afford um, a walk-in or to hire employees and have people come in and security and like a lot of things that goes in with uh, just allowing uh, 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 people to just walk in um, a particular uh, office park, you know. So their office park is quite small. I might have some images or some videos here for you, but their, their office park is quite small and that also means that um, they don't have enough space for for, 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 for allowing people to walk in and out. And um, AfriHost also was at a point where uh, they couldn't afford to do uh, uh, walk-ins. Sometimes it's definitely money, sometimes it's definitely space, and sometimes it's capabilities, sometimes it's experience, you know, it's a lot of things, you know. But at this point, Rain does not have a walk-in center. They do have a call center, which is fantastic, if I may say. Uh, in fact, their support is actually it's, it's amazing because on my case, I had a dedicated a dedicated support person to make sure that I'm, I'm connected well um, 
and I'm, I'm uh, like everything is fine and even after that I had a call from the actual call center that called me and said yo how's it going and I was like that's actually good who are you uh some guy from rain oh hey man what's up you know so that actually um uh is something that they need to get right uh, to be honest you know you, they definitely need to be able to compete with the big players at that level but at this point the the i think the focus is just deployment and growth and everything like that and they're currently doing well so i, I wouldn't bash them that much but that's number two rain is actually on 4g as well as 5g they're the only one that are actually live on 4g and 5g and i feel like that is commendable um it's insignificant to, 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 to really think about. Like, it's like, oh no, a network should have 4G and 5G, but no, 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 no. It takes a lot, man. Um, it, it really does take a lot, you know? So, so the way they doing it, um, to be able to, without the actual, like, like all the spectrum that they need, this is, it's fantastic. And I, I commend them. I think they are really, like they are ahead in that sense, you know. 4G is definitely a start, you know, it's, it's a great thing for us. But 5G is like monumental, you know, and they have that, you know. Uh, I know this seems like, you know, it's referring to the other point, but it's not really because I'm, I'm mentioning two spheres here. It's it's like talking about Edge and 3G, you know. There were, there were, there were cases where you would only get Edge, you know, and that, and that sucked properly, you know. Uh, and only people in, 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 in 3G, when it moved back to edge, actually complained, you know? So in other words, this is basically a benefit uh, to the people with 5G, you know, that they can fall back on 4G, but you know, they will only feel this benefit when they complain about it because that's the only time people actually know that they're not, you know, getting what they deserve. Um, so yeah, 4G and 5G on one network is a powerful thing and MTN, Vodacom, Telcom, come on, get on board, man. Come in with a, with them. What, what are you waiting for? Come in. Um, now, another point, and this is a benefit to, if you were to think about it, um, 5G people. There's no throttling for 5G people. There's no throttling. Zero. Zero throttling for people that are on 5G unkept. Why do you say there's zero? Well, there's because I do have the package number one number two is that um they are trying to gain as much clients as possible and how do you keep someone that's youtubing and downloading and watching dstv and doing pretty much everything at the same time why would you do that how do you benefit from that person because a terabyte to that person is very very easy so why would you make them suffer for fast speeds and, and that's exactly why they don't have throttling. They don't have throttling because they want more clients and they want more clients by giving them fast internet and that fast internet just translates to them downloading even more. So why would you keep such a person? Why would you give that person a specific um, fair usage policy, F-U-C, huh? F-U-P? Hmm? You remember that, people? <laughs> hmm? If you did ADSL, you remember that because I think if you got to 500 gigabyte at some point on a two meg line, <laughs> a fair user policy was gonna cut you out, man. You 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 were just probably gonna be able to YouTube, but your website will probably be slow. Um, your browsing will probably be slow on anything, um, and even some YouTube actually would be throttled. Like it's, it's it, it was mad. So effectively, uh, rain is is an, again pushing another boundary where yes, fiber doesn't really throttle, and and we get that. But fiber is is 10 megabytes per second, 20 megabytes per second, you know, 50 megabytes per second if you are really crazy because you're gonna be actually getting charged even more at some point in most of the um, ISPs at, at 1,000 and 5G, if you are in Joburg, hmm? granted, all right? Um, but yeah, that was the case with with ADSL. ADSL would basically start threatening you uh, at a certain amount, uh, dependent on your specific megabytes per second speed. The next point is 
is a big one. Um, Rain just signed up with Vodacom to deploy 4G across the country. How good is that? Basically, that just means that Vodacom allows now, well, they're gaining money from Rain or, 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 or making profits from Rain, but basically, Rain is now everywhere for everyone to be able to, to access. Why is that a good thing? Well, if you think about it, Rain is currently one of the cheapest data providers, if not the cheapest. Um, why is it the cheapest? How can you prove that? Well, they give you uncapped during day uh, and only charge you 250 during day. That's the, that's the keyword, during day. Why is that a big thing? Well, I mean, businesses can run on 4G, literally. You can send emails, you can YouTube, you can do a lot of things, you know, if you a team of five, 10 people, you know, uh, 10 is stretching it. But you can definitely run uh, 5G, 4G uh, in an office. Um, but think about it. You can definitely run 4G for a full-fledged office and do every basic thing and, and, and work just for 250. 250. Like, 